Hello and welcome to another Monarchs Friday Focus. Joined tonight by Dave Harley. Thanks very much for stepping in, Dave. Uh, Dave, another victory for the Monarchs. 54, 36 and three points on the board. Putting us towards those playoff places. We'll hear reaction from both sides of the pits and also see the race tonight. So, Dave, uh, coming out tonight, Sheffield's lineup um, looked a little bit underwhelming. Obviously, they're on a terrible run. I don't think they've won since the 5th of July, but a, a spirited battle by the Tigers and a couple of things that have went their way. That could have been tough tonight. Yeah, no, it was actually, they were a lot better than I thought they were going to be. And yeah. every one of them were fighting. Even yeah. I mean, even Lawler, who scored zero, is, has been competitive. Yeah. All right, he's never got a point scoring position. And then, then you've got Casper Anderson scoring points like he's, like he's been here many times before and he's yeah. more than he's scored anywhere else. That was it. I mean, that, I think that was the most impressive bit, wasn't it? You had Casper Anderson making his debut here, Brock Nickel making. In fact, there was four, I think, debutants in the, the Sheffield yep. side here. Anderson was 13, Shane's very impressive yep. with 10. Um, if they'd had that backup at 1 and 5 from Mason and, and Kyle Howarth, what we would have expected, then Sheffield could have taken something. Yeah, as you say, I mean, Campton excluded for two minutes in the first race, and only, your number one only scores two points, you're always going to struggle to win. But for them to get up to 36, especially as you say, they're on a form, they're on, it's, it's a decent turnout for Sheffield. Yeah, and two, two contrasting styles, I'd say, Anderson, that sort of traditional Scandinavian gait and, and look very comfortable, and Shane's, what a, what a fantastic style on the beginning. For the, the first heat when he, he threw it into the, the fence, I still thought, well, he's not afraid to twist the throttle. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, he's looked good hanging off the back of the bike, yeah. and looking to score in a, I mean, the only race he never scored in was Heat 15 yeah. so it's brilliant for him and even then he was right on it at one point he was right up Eric's, Eric's tail on Heat 15 and what a scalp that would have been for him if he could have passed Eric Riss in Heat yeah, 15 no definitely as you say one for the future but it's a big win for the Monarchs and he did three points and and we've delivered the three points. That's right, you mentioned that. Like, that's all we can really do at the minute, is keep picking up the three points at home. Big away match this week on, on Thursday at Sheffield. We'll touch on that a little bit later, but job done tonight. Yeah, three points is a must. Yeah. Uh, we've come here, difficult conditions, the track's put not really the way the riders want it because they've threat of rain all day, And but the last thing we needed was any rain, and yeah. fortunately it held off, and, and they actually end up uh, watering the track mid-meeting, which yeah. you would never have believed to seen the the weather forecast that's it if we look into the, the home side now obviously um, Richie Worrell you, you can't say much more than that five heats five wins never troubled it after the second bend and uh, three matches at Armadale as a monarch three maximums looks fantastic yeah yeah. yeah he's looking good in the, those blue and luminous <laughs> yellow it's not really gold is it the, the leathers but uh, looking fantastic at Armadale and long may that continue especially next weekend yeah, well backed up, of course by Eric and Ricky both only beaten once um, both of them their first defeats in three weeks so, mm. so that'll Spur them on a wee bit for next week as well. Yeah, no, it's, again, they're, they're both looking really good. And uh -huh. I'm sure they're disappointed at dropping a point, but it's, uh, from a financial perspective, we <laughs> can't be scoring six to nine every week. So, uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a good victory. I mean, we've only ran, we've ran six last places, I think. Yeah. I think so, the, the sort of score was built on the top five. You're right, you look at the, the main body team, only two last from the main body team. One of them was Josh's retirement when he was sitting comfortably in a scoring position. One, yeah. Um, yeah. So again, it's it's a good base to build on. We've seen Willie Lawson come back. He wasn't off the pace. He, he, I spoke to him briefly briefly after the match and he said that he, he was happy with it. He feels he can build on it. It's just about building that sharpness. Obviously, he's given everyone two-thirds yeah. of a season as a start and, and the signs were there for Willie. Yeah, two-thirds in eight years to remember because oh. that's eight <laughs> years since he's in a, he's a proper meeting yeah. but his score... Pay, I think he paid for us, something like, something something like that. Team. Yeah, he's beating yeah. the num beating the number one of the opposite team. Uh -huh. You can't really ask for more than that. No, and I think th there's probably more to come from Moy once he gets dialed back yeah, in. So, yeah. um, obviously, the night out tonight is just about getting those three points, and that was very true. And we caught up and got the uh, Monarchs' reaction afterwards. Richie, another match for the Monarchs, another maximum. You must be pleased. Yeah, not been beat yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm enjoying it. Really, I'm. I knew. Um, well, as an aware rider, I always used to come and score really well. Um, you know, sometimes get beat by Ricky or Eric. I don't have to race them now. I'm racing with them. So uh, I was expecting something like this to happen. Yeah. Uh, How did you find the track tonight? A little bit slick. But um, kind of, I think somebody tonight was looking over me because the engine I would normally use, which is a strong one, the cylinder tuners. Um, Bomber was meant to bring it up because uh, he passes Coventry. But obviously Glasgow got rained off, so I couldn't use that one, so I had to use a different one, and it, it worked anyway. So I might leave that in for next week. <laughs> and uh, Sheffield next Thursday, and then the big matches against Glasgow next week. How do you how do you see that going? I'm looking forward to them. Um, I got asked before, you know, we've got a point to prove. You know, I think that'd be petty if I did. I'm a lot happier where I'm at. Um, like I said, one reason I think it wasn't working there, 
and um, you know they've gone their way I've gone my way I'm enjoying myself and I was, I'm just going to go into that meeting and just want to win like uh, I always do there's no point to pray I think that's already been proven um, I'm just enjoying myself and I'll carry on doing that yeah. well it's great to have you on our side of the, the pits now and uh, well done tonight again oh thank you cheers so, um, you know, philosophical there, but yeah. it's upwards and onwards, you know, it's, we needed three points tonight, it's three points on the board, keeps us on a par, if you look at that plus minus table as we call it, yeah. we've now got ourselves, Peterborough, Ipswich and Glasgow, two into four, uh, or four into two as it is for the, those last yeah, two places, yeah. so all you can do is keep on your home ones and then the away matches, they'll need to start taking care of themselves starting at Sheffield on Thursday. Yeah, as you say, it's a big one Thursday night, I mean, they've now lost, I think that's four home meetings in a row. All of them by 14 yeah, or more as well. Um, uh, Newcastle last night you never yeah. never thought Newcastle would hit 55 away this season but fair fair play to them Anderson scoring a few more yeah. points tonight hopefully they're not picked up a lot of confidence from tonight and we can go there and t if we turn up Ricky's Ricky's former home yeah. track and it's, it's if we don't pick up points yeah. here we're going to struggle to get is playoffs it, I think Is it one of those matches that actually to use like it's almost like a, to use a football cup tie analogy with the favourite because the Monarchs probably will go into that match as favourite is it one of those matches where we've actually got nothing to gain and everything to lose because if we don't take the four yeah. points everyone's talking about and expecting or even three yeah. points everyone's maybe talking and expecting then it's is it viewed as a disappointment You're almost like a cup tie where say a, a Premier League team goes to a lower league team and, and then you know if they yeah. win 5-0 they were meant to win 5-0 if they don't then it's a disappointment yeah no especially the way we've been going recently yeah. and things like that and and as I say, if you want to be up the top four, want to be in there, you've got to be picking up away, away wins, not just a point or two away. We need yeah. we need to go there and pick up some big points. Yep, and Sheffield obviously will take a little bit of confidence from tonight. You mentioned a few other guys. I think I believe Charles Wright's due back next yeah. Thursday. With a, I didn't actually know what was wrong with him. I believe it was a ban for missing a Leicester match. That's why he was out this. Way. I've seen that on Facebook. Whether it's right or wrong, I'm not sure. That I've seen somebody else illness, so so who knows? But you know. Anderson, that's, I think he's only his second meeting for Sheffield or his third, he's, he's top score season, that'll buy him. James Shane's can only be buoyed by that. Um, you know, Kyle Howarth won't score four points at home, so it's not going to be easy down there. The Monarchs still need to go down there and do a job, and I think knowing our guys as I do, talking to them every week, you know, that, that's the mindset they'll have is every match starts 0-0 zero, zero and, and you've got to go out there and beat the opposition that's next year. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, it's, you can almost, when you talk about must-win meetings and yeah. things like that, we're, we're now at the, at the cutting edge bit of the season where every every meeting's really must-win or yeah. score well if we want to go and take the ambitions forward to, to really trouble and win the league title. That's, that's what we're here for and we've got a great opportunity to do it. But, you, but there's not that many opportunities left for away victories after Sheffield. I think it's only Glasgow and Workington, and yeah. and they aren't they won't be easy. No, but that's points it. I think when you, when you look at the fixtures we've got, and even here at Armadale, there's a lot of fixtures against the teams that are that are chasing. And, and maybe a fixture like Sheffield is an outlier that we're maybe going there at a time where they're struggling a little bit, and, and four points could be huge because you look the rest of the way. Glasgow, have, I think their last three away meetings are Lakeside, Ipswich, and here. How many away points are in that for us after Sheffield, as you mentioned, yep. um, Workington and Glasgow? Got how many away points are in that? Who knows? So this is a big one on Thursday. But yeah. as we say, you know, Sheffield can be buoyed by a few of the performances tonight, and we heard from the Sheffield camp afterwards as well. Casper, your first match at Edinburgh here, and we didn't know what to expect, but you certainly uh, were very impressive. Yeah, I, uh, I was quite excited going to Edinburgh. I've heard it's a lot, it's a um, hard track to ride, so I just thought, well, I just come here and enjoy it, and the track suited me pretty well. So, yeah, I'm happy for tonight. Yeah. And uh, well, with your ad addition to the team, that hopefully will strengthen Sheffield. Are you looking forward to the rest of the season? Yeah, hopefully I can stay at Sheffield for next season. You know, but we just have to see how the end of the season goes here. But yeah, I thought I think that I made quite an impression for tonight. So yeah, hopefully next year's Sheffield too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, we obviously would hope to go well at home, but quite a lot, a lot of riders ride shit, you know big tracks well and then come here and struggle. But you you need a bit of skill here to get round, and you certainly had that. Yeah, because this actually it reminds me a lot of my home track back in Denmark, but uh, this is a little more a little bit more wavy. But yeah, it suited me quite well. Yeah. yeah good. And. Uh, well, obviously, monitors are down at Sheffield next Thursday, but are you are you looking forward to uh, you know fitting into that team and doing well for the rest of the season? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, mate, definitely. Well, well done tonight, Casper. Good, good racing. Cheers. Well done. So, all to, all to race for on Thursday, and um, we'll, we'll take that as it comes. Obviously, keep an eye on the Monarchs website and social media for updates on that. And you mentioned earlier on we've had the, the threat of rain. We actually moved in, but we're going to do this uh, al fresco, as they call it tonight. But the rain came in, so we've moved under the, the shelter. And that did 
lead to a slight difference in track prep. Over the last couple of weeks, where it's been really grippy, the track was quite slick, and that maybe fed into the um, their way riders a lot about particularly the debutantes when they yeah. they could sit out there and sit quite comfortably on there um, that's yeah, not when, when it's slick it's yeah. always it's always easier for riders are more confident we want it, the air top guys want yeah. it grippy they want it to be able to attack the track properly when it's slick it gives some of these other guys better opportunities I was talking to Gordon earlier and he was just saying watching my phone all day watching the weather forecast really desperate to go out there and do something but you don't you don't want to put water on the track then it rains and you're you're struggling. Exactly, you know, especially after last week. Um, yeah, we did have a, there was a, a shower, sort of heat four or five, wasn't it, that we were lucky enough yeah. passed us by. But that's not to say there wasn't some cracking racing. And our heat of the night this week comes from heat four, where uh, actually all four, you know, Eric Gress, Kyle Howarth, James Shanes and Joe Anderson yeah. roll in the mix. And we'll see that heat now. So heat four looks very interesting. James Shanes on gate one, Joel Anderson gate two, Kyle Howarth gate three and Eric Gress in gate four. Joel's away well, but Kyle Hearth has pushed his way through the middle, and he's gone ahead. Eric Riss comes barging up the inside, nearly loses it there, and Hearth leads, and Shane's is challenging hard on Anderson. Joel's going to have to move out a wee bit if he wants to retain the lead. Here comes Eric Riss up the inside of Hearth, and he's gone through brilliantly. Terrific riding by Riss. And at the same time, Joel Anderson's got through on Shane's and he's challenging Howarth as well. But back comes Shane's. Tremendous race for the minor placings. And Shane's has blocked out Anderson that time. Superb riding by Eric Riss. And interesting stuff at the back as well. Anderson might still be in with a shout there for that third, but not quite. So a shared race and a very interesting heat four. Racing tonight so far by a long way. And look like two races in one in the early parts. Eric Riss and Kyle Howard giving it ding dong there. And ultimately the skipper of the Monarchs. So some decent action again tonight, David. And we've mentioned it a couple of times that this was the... The thing to take from tonight is three points, job done. We move on to Sheffield on Thursday. We've talked about that a little bit. Next Friday, another huge one. The, the yeah. Glasgow Tigers come to visit. Both are chasing the playoffs. Um, it's, it's going to be a big, big weekend next weekend. Yeah, it's a huge weekend for uh, for Edinburgh and Glasgow on the, on the track. I mean, we're talking about getting away points, but any points we take against Glasgow away well, is a big dent in their, their yeah. chances of the playoffs. And the same when they come on Friday night, they want to stop us getting to the playoffs, regardless of yeah. whether they do or not. So it can make a big difference. We've also got the, the Platinum Gala on Saturday night. It's a huge weekend for the for the Monarchs. You see that there, that, that's got to be the minimum target next weekend. It's not just the winning, it's the making sure Glasgow go home empty-handed. We need to look at 49-41 as a, a worst-case scenario next Friday. Um, obviously, we'll see the, the makeup of the, the Glasgow team. I, I believe they'll need a guest for Craig Cook. He'll be practising for one of the Grand Prix, I forget what one it is, and obviously Nathan Graves due to make his track return tomorrow in Denmark in the British team in the world under 21 team final, so it'll be interesting to see um, how he comes through that, and if he comes through unscathed, um, dare I say it, if he doesn't, we could potentially see James Shanes again next week, I don't know if the average is fit, if that <laughs> would work out. <laughs> um, but it, it's going to be huge, and, and, and a huge weekend, and that's what it's all about. Hopefully the weather's set fair this week, um, we get two huge crowds, we'll phone away to cheer them on, um, and then we'll see how it goes, and it's, it's getting near crunch time as that playoff deadline looms on the it's the 9th of September it was, I heard it mooted, it might have been moved, but there we go, so that gives us an extra five days to fit some of these meetings in, um, which is good, because you... <laughs> quite why it needs extended when there's only one home and away but we're, we're not talking about that but, but you, you want, want the weather to decide who's in the playoffs on you track. Want it, yeah. you know, yeah. have been probably the best team in the league so far but they've still got seven home matches to fit in and you wouldn't want them missing out because they only get to race two or three of those so it's fair that it's decided yeah. on the track um, and then I guess it's uh, it's upwards and onwards with a cup semi-final still to come as well come. hopefully a fantastic September and October to yeah. come ahead but it starts next weekend Friday night Glasgow Tigers here, let's bring them on. That's it, as David says, uh, bring them on and thanks very much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your week. Good night.